Fun yeah. little thing. Cute as heck. Uh, in studio with us right now, Eddie Gokenauer. Edward, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? Excellent. Thank you. Good. And Hunter Wilson, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you? Yeah, great. Pull that mic as close to you as you possibly can just so we can uh, we can hear okay. you real good. Uh, and, and, and Hunter, your position with the Fire Board, sir? I've been the chairman for about the last six or seven years. Chairman of the Fire Board for the last six, seven years? Been on the Fire Board since 2012. Okay. And your experience as a fireman? Nope. Huh. Just or, Fire or, Board. Fire Board. Okay, Mr. very good. Mr. Stubblefield, a long time ago when he was a county commissioner, pulled me aside one day and said, Mr. Wilson, it's time you get involved and help the county. Really? Yes. And Hunter had took that request seriously. He has been a instrumental part of the county on a lot of different things. He's the fire board, what he's identified with, but he's been, uh, he's assists the county in so many different ways. Now, Hunter... Bill says a lot of things to a lot of people, but nobody ever listens. Why did you decide to listen? Uh, Mr. Stubblefield and I have always had a great relationship, and we worked on a – first program we worked on was a program called SWAP, Source Water Protection Plan. And uh, that was the first program I worked on with him, and then after that he stuck me on the airport authority, and then from there the fire board and the development authority. All right. And, and Eddie, obviously, you do have a lot of experience in EMS and fire preparation and, and, and stuff. I do. A few yeah. years. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you do with the fire board? Actually, I'm, uh, I represent a commission on the fire board now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, the first couple of years I was on the commission, I intentionally stayed off of that board. Uh, just give me a little bit of a break and give them a break as well. Uh, as, as I mean, as a fire service. Uh, but, but I'm ready to go now. And, um, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to be back on this board. You talked about this last year where you said that you and, and Steve had tried to stay away from where your areas were in your careers, but yeah. now it's time to get back and back Yeah, and I, and I think, you know, Steve and I both agreed that, you know, you can't, uh, you can't, you know, immediately step out of that operation and then onto a board because you're too close. And you don't want it to think that, that you're encroaching upon the new people coming in. They need their own way, and uh, and this gives them that space that they need to to grow themselves. And uh, but but I'm I'm happy to be back on you know involved with the fire service. And uh, Dylan, go ahead and bring that document up on screen if you have it ready. And Hunter, tell us about uh, what we're, what we'll look, be looking at on before screen. we do that. Can yeah. we take a step backward? What yeah. is the function of the fire board? The fire board funds all five volunteer fire departments in this county. Uh, even though our volunteers do a lot of fundraising, uh, like you take South Berkeley, the fire board's having to put in 400000 of almost a $900,000 engine. That's how much money they raise. And the fire board money today comes from where? comes from a fire board fee. And we run on about $2.5, $2.7 All million. local money, or does some of that come from the state? It's all local money. Okay. Unless but I'm sorry, okay. go right ahead. But it's a little confusing, uh, John. We have uh, five volunteer fire departments, but embedded, and they, as Hunter says, all the equipment's paid for by the, the, through the fire board. But embedded in those five volunteer fire companies are paid staff that work side by side with the volunteer staff. Those paid staff, their salaries are covered by the county. And you helped negotiate the merging of the volunteers and yes, the paid staff, did. Bill? Yes, we did. Uh, Eddie and I uh, worked on that together for it took us a couple of three years because the, I was like the Middle East peace talks at one point. Well, it, it started off that way, yeah, because the fire companies, the volunteer fire companies, are really cultures within themselves. That's where the in the old days the community in, revolved around the fire companies, uh, the volunteer, and they did not want to give that up. There was real concern that the county would be coming in and taking over what they viewed as their their identity. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, and Eddie and I took the uh, approach that we don't want to force anything. When they're ready, they'll come to us. But we spent at least two, maybe longer than that, years talking to them, a lot of coffee drunk, a lot of one-on-one -on -one discussions, and finally the comfort level got high enough that they said, we think it's time. And it's worked exceptionally well. And again, uh, Hunter, with his position as being the fire board, has made that happen go even smoother. A lot of blood has been spilled in, in counties where that's been handled badly. Um, yeah. Elsewhere, 
Well, yeah, and it was important, you know, yeah. that that this get started on the right foot. You know, I I came from you know the city. Uh, everybody in the fire service knew me, and you know, with Mr. Stubblefield and I, we we went to every firehouse and we had those conversations many we, times. Uh, we answered those questions yeah. and uh, we stuck we stuck by our word. But we but the fire board. To get back to your original question, is the financial arm for okay. the fire service. Uh, <clears throat> And Dylan, maybe you could bring that document up now. And Hunter, tell us what the voters are going to be doing this uh, election. This election will be just on a commercial fee. We are leaving the residential fees. They were raised in 2012. Mm -hmm. This is a commercial fee. Uh, we hope to, the voters will pass. It will go to a straight seven cents a square foot across the board instead of the way it's tiered now with so much of a fee and so much a square foot. Uh, it will basically add somewhere around a million dollars to us, mm -hmm. million, million five, somewhere in that area. The most important thing here is what Eddie hasn't told you, and Bill and Eddie got the two people into the fire department. Through a safer grant, the county was able to fund 24-7 coverage out of Baker Heights, which Baker Heights gets worked an awful lot. And now if we get this increase, uh, the fire board has agreed to work with the county to help fund putting 24-7 coverage at Hedgesville because they're getting a lot of calls. This is amending it to seven cents. What is it now? Uh, it varies on different ones of them right now. Uh, it's a flat fee and three or four cents a square foot. Some of the smaller commercial businesses will probably get a little bit of a break some of the larger businesses it'll be a pretty substantial increase okay so when i'm looking at this chart and it says zero to 2500 square feet 95 dollars that's what the person is currently paying yeah and, and do we know how much the increase would mean they would pay now uh, you'd have to i'd have to run the number up for you it would just be seven cents times 2500 square feet for or a thousand square feet or whatever it might simple be. simple math anything over a yeah. hundred thousand is three cents not, right not, now, not to, they don't go to seven. But it, would, they would, it would more than double to seven cents. Yeah. Okay, and this will generate how much additional revenue for about you? About a million five. And you'll do what with that money? Uh, most of our fleet is coming up on, our average age of our fleet is 2007. Most of our fleet is coming up on 20 years of age, uh, which we need, according to NAFTA, we should be replacing equipment. But we are also committed to helping the county fund more paid staff for 24 7 coverage because we just baker heights is running the wheels off their equipment and we need another station with 24 7 coverage it's mm -hmm. it's a big thing and right now the paid staff and the volunteers work together with using each other's equipment and everything else like that but the fire board uh, is responsible for buying like the air packs those are due in 2032 last time we got a grant in 2032, it's going to cost us about $1.8 million to replace them. Things like that, radios, will probably be there doing about 10 years. So that's about another six, dollars $700,000. And we set up funds to save money for all this stuff. We have increased our stations. Uh, South Berkeley, Baker Heights, Hedgesville all now have the capability of 24-7 coverage because we have bunks, we have kitchens, we have... Uh, we have generators that if we ever had a major center or storm, our first responders could get in there and be cool and get a meal because we got commercial kitchens in these places. Mm -hmm. So this we're building for the future. Eddie and myself and some others said, all right, let's try to build these stations the last next 40 years. And if, if uh, this vote uh, goes through, does it need 50% plus one or does it need two thirds or just a, just a majority, simple majority? Simple majority vote. All right, Mr. Gilstrap, you spent a great deal of your career as a volunteer firefighter and an EMS worker. Hit it. Um, how many calls a year does overall? Does I would, in 2012, our calls were roughly, if you did an average. You said 2012, is that what uh, you meant? Okay. 2012, our calls were roughly 600 calls per, per station per year. In 2023, it was over 800 calls per station per year. And that's just fire. We're not talking EMS here? No, that's, every, that's fire, EMS, collision. That's everything that our people run on. Now, the ambulance increase has cut our EMS calls down considerably, but we run a lot of collision. The interstate, 
I joke thinking, you know, DOH should have built us a station out on the interstate because we spent so much time out on that interstate chasing wrecks and fires, and we do have to help with EMS once in a while. So does the paid staff that we're hiring, does that, do they cover EMS as well? Do they run ambulances, or is that no, just they, fire? No, no, just fire. Just okay. fire, and they assist with the EMS. Um, the other thing is, it's, it's, I think is notable, out of that fire fee that's currently there, we're, we're maintaining uh, 25 pieces of heavy equipment, and that's from an engine to a squad to a tanker, uh, 25 pieces, and uh, taking care of nine different facilities. So those, those things aren't cheap. Yeah. How and much it, is just a, one more, and that, sorry, just, sorry, yeah. when what is a commercial space what what defines a commercial space as opposed to a not commercial space well, any place i I run a business out of my home I write books am I a commercial space or am it's I residential residence? that's residential. Okay. residential so when does a commercial space become a commercial space I guess when you don't sleep there okay that's fine uh, How's that? All right. the commercial space is identified by the county assessor okay Bill, how much is a, a an engine how, for replacement? How much does it cost? What do you cost? Uh, South Berkeley's buying one right now. It, you know, it'll take a couple of years to get it built, but we committed money to them. It's over nine hundred thousand dollars, and it's not. It's a identical twin to what engine twenty two. Twenty two. Yeah. yeah. It's just it's a fire truck. There's not any whole lot of bells and whistles on it. It's a fire truck. How many uh, ladder trucks do we have in the county? We currently have four. Four. Yeah, that includes the VA Center and the City of Martinsburg, uh, Tower 40, which is out of Bennington, and Truck 30s in Hedgesville. Mm -hmm. Well, that's interesting. Is there a federal fire department at the VA Center? Yes, sir. Okay. And is that, do they run mutual aid with us? They absolutely do. Okay. Yes, sir. And so does the Air Guard. Yep. And are they, are they part of the box assignments for yes. residential or whatever? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. The increase people are voting on, is that strictly commercial and not residential? Yes, sir. It is strictly commercial. And it does not include support for the Air Guard or VA? This no, is sir. this um, the county-run This is volunteers. just for the, yep. the five departments yep. that are in the county. And people, if you're looking at this and you, you would like this to go through, you should vote yes. The way this is worded, it would, it would indicate you should vote yes. Yes, sir. Sometimes these things don't look like they should when you go to read them. I think this was pretty straightforward. Yes, simple. it is. It is. But we're looking for the county support. The volunteers have done remarkable work. I mean, you're, you're talking about people that have full-time jobs and families that get up in the middle of the night. Uh, Eddie and, him and Bill got the two people in that took the load off during the day. And with Baker Heights coming on 24-7 and now with us, helping the county with Hedgesville. That'll give us two 24-7 stations. And these are the reason we're building these new stations to handle sleeping quarters and everything like that. So that we got places to put paid firefighters overnight. And they're safe places and they're places that the fire marshal has agreed that would be safe. Eddie, as a commissioner, and Bill, you know, as a former president of the commission, these things people ask in regards to taxes versus fees and no it's the same you know fees a tax a tax is a fee but it's not the way it's not treated the same the way the county's able to distribute the money which is the importance of a fee versus a tax yeah the, you know with a with this fee you know the school board does not get their percentage of that i wish they do on a tax so 82 percent that's, that's a huge chunk you know out of that fee particular so a fee it's it's cash equivalent you collect the fee you use the fee yes sir. you don't share the fee other than where it's supposed to go that's correct and that's the importance of this passing in regards to these things being accomplished here. That, yes, sir. That is very important. Uh, will you need something additional to this in the next coming years? That should hold us. The last increase was 2012. So if we can get the next increase to last as long, I think we'd be doing pretty good. It depends on what the, the county on is apply for some safer grants. We've got one more station we need to build up at Beddington because mm -hmm. the old Beddington station really doesn't have any place for their people to sleep at night if we go to 24-7 there. And Hunter, if this is voted in, does it have an expiration date or is it in in perpetuity? It's just a flat fee that's in in perpetuity. Never has to be renewed or voted on again like a school levy? No, sir. Very good. And this has the advantage that it has uh, its change in per square foot. Uh, the first time we put through, we did have tears because it was the first. It was the first opportunity, the first time that we were actually asked folks to uh, uh, 
pay a fee to support the uh, the fire. And it, we had a lot of trouble trying to push it through the commercial side so it would appear fair and balanced. And that's why you had certain tiers. There. And it, again, that took a lot of negotiation. We talk, worked with a lot of the commercial folks, and finally they accepted the fact. Our county has grown so much. Everyone everyone acknowledge the fact that we've got to put more resources in both the fire and the ambulance side. The model that served us so well for 100 years uh, no longer works with this growth. And uh, so the, uh, both the commercial and the residential side, I think, appreciate the fact of what we're having to do, and they're willing to pay. They're willing to pay with the fees. Eddie, with the recently passed impact fees, would that be a source of money that would help to supplement what Hunter Wilson's talking about here today. It certainly could be. Uh, we The commission has not yet decided. We've, there's a lot of work to do for us to get to that point. But I, I would like to see whoever is truly impacted by the growth of this county be at the table and be a recipient, you know, of those impact fee dollars. So certainly, you know, in my view, the fire service has an impact. Law enforcement has an impact. EMS, um, Parks and Rec, you know, all, all these all these good things, uh, I feel, should be at the table when that impact fee, uh, th those fees are, are split. Well, let me ask you this, because this would be the logical question, and I know I'm going to see soon enough posed on Facebook, which is, if you're getting impact fees already coming your way, why do I need to vote for an increase in this fee for fire well, the fire board? That's that's a good point, and, and let, me, let me tell you that we, we don't need every penny that's out there we don't and and i'm I, I want us to be fair i want us to be fair to the residents of this county i want us to be fair to the industry in this county and what we don't need we will give back it, it's at it that's just that's just how i feel I, I look we do need money to operate on and currently you know it's things are getting a little tight even in every across the board because as hunter just mentioned the price of this equipment has just gone through the roof in the last couple of years. You know, I'm, I don't want to tell my age, but the first pumper I ever ordered was $44,000. Now they and cost that, what? And now that pumper is $900,000 with a two-year wait. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and, and Ariel John is two to $2.5 million. Goodness gracious. Yeah. $44,000 is 1960. That was 1974. Seven. Okay. Yep, 1977. Well, <clears throat> so I want to, do we have long-term plans? I'm thinking, as you're talking about all of this, the we got railroads, a lot of those. We've got 81. There's a lot of hazmat exposure here. Uh, where does our hazmat assistance come from if, if there's an incident? We have a hazmat team. We, we have a hazmat team. We're the Region 3 uh, response team for the state, uh, which currently. Where is that housed? Where's the equipment housed? It, it's at Baker Heights. Okay. Uh, it's, in, it's at our 24-hour station. Uh, it is ran by. Uh, Chief Roberts of Berkeley Fire, okay. and uh, and we've we've got a good team. They've got good equipment. Their training's uh, up to speed, and uh, they they do a, a very good job. Uh, in in times of you know, you know what it takes to do a, a true level way hazmat incident, it takes a lot of people. So then we reach out. You know, uh, the city of Martinsburg can help us a little bit. The guard can help us some. Loudoun County, we will bring them in. We'll bring in Washington County. So on those major events, uh, we we've got. We've got the resources to get us started, but, we, but we'll need help to keep it going. William? Yeah, uh, and keep in mind that the main, main thrust of this uh, referendum is to provide resources to the volunteers and also, also some salaries to go to 24-7 and a couple of stations. Yes, sir. And it's not to, uh, uh, it's, it's mostly buying new equipment and buying new radios and buying new air packs, stuff that all the stuff has a finite life expectancy and they need to be replaced. They do, and uh, which I had, I had approached the fire board uh, probably a year or so ago about splitting the cost of staffing in a, a station because mm -hmm. We had a station that was really struggling in the middle of the night. So uh, at, at that particular time, they, they, they didn't feel financially that they could do it. But with this increase, they'll be able to help with that staffing. So uh, yeah. the county has also applied for a SAFER grant for 12 additional paid firefighters, which is uh, that was submitted uh, last week. And uh, we, feel, we feel very confident uh, with the abilities and the, the folks that we've reached out to, to 
to make it the best grant that we could possibly make it. So uh, we're, we're trying everywhere we can to get help uh, in the fire service in this county. If you had the money to hire 12 new firefighters, could you find 12 new firefighters to hire? Well, it, 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 maybe not, uh, but maybe we could, we could steal some from some others, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, that's just kind that's of the way works. that works. You know, so, um, Maybe you recruit Gilstrap back, and he's yeah. just here on Mondays anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> but that might but work. Berkeley County was the first to integrate paid in with the volunteers. In fact, we may still be the only one that does this. Now, municipalities may have it, but not the county as a whole. So we're the first. We're breaking a lot of ground. I listened to the delegates uh, and the senators this past year lament the problems of other parts of the state are having with volunteers with the fire services fortunately with the leadership we have we don't have that problem we may not be perfect in every regard but we provide very good fire service to the residents of the county yeah just trying to make it better very good hunter uh this will only appear on the may 14th primary ballot not on the general that's correct sir this is your one time to vote for it right now yes this is your one time uh we really need to help uh, we got a lot of things we got to do. We got a lot of money we got to put back for things like I told you, air packs, um, turnout gear, all this stuff, personal safety equipment. Uh, we need this increase to do that and to also start working on our fleet to help the county with paid staff and to start looking at, at upgrading some of our, our trucks and stuff. Do you know what question this will be on the ballot? Question no, number? I don't, sir. Okay. In regards and, to the fire board, though, your recommendation is for people to vote yes. Yes, sir. And you mentioned a while ago it just took a simple majority. I was thinking a referendum such as this required a super majority, 60%. No, sir. No. Just 50% in this case. That's Le good. The legislature changed everything. It used to be it went to the county, yeah. and then they changed it a year or two ago. They were just done on a simple referendum. Outstanding. And people need to realize that this equipment they're talking about, the air packs and the, and the running gear and all of this, yes, it's it's there to protect the firefighters, but you understand that this is what the firefighters need to be able to go in and rescue you and your, and your family from that fire, right? So this is this is an investment in your own safety. This is not an investment just in the, the firefighters' own safety, which is ample enough reason to do it. Yep. But without that safety equipment, they they can't do their job, and their job is to protect you. It's the most important piece of equipment in that entire neighborhood. Eddie, thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Hunter, nice to meet you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you, sir. Any you final thoughts from either one of you in regards to this ballot measure? I think it's very important. I think it's time uh, for everybody to step up. It's a fair across-the-board statement. Uh, we need to help the county. The county needs to help us. We're starting to work together with uh, EMS and some other places to try and help save the county some money, which Eddie's kind of leading the charge on that. So uh, this is a fair thing. I think it's fair for everyone. I appreciate you both coming in today. Thank, Thank you, sir.